Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Angelo. As some of you may have heard a couple days ago as of this recording, Adobe has released the full compatible version for M1 Apple Silicon chips of Premiere Pro. Now that is really exciting for a lot of people. Um, I myself actually currently use Final Cut Pro right now, but I actually originally learned on Premiere Pro. And I know a lot of my friends who are hesitant in diving into the M1 Silicon chip because Premiere Pro hasn't been optimized for, for it just, just yet. So um, this release is actually really exciting. It's big news for a lot of people because I know the power of the M1 MacBooks. Um, or the M1 chips, and it's actually really good. You know, I, I think it's a good step forward for Apple. So we're gonna see how it handles. So let's go ahead and dive into my computer right now and see where we're at with these first impressions of the Adobe Premiere for M1 Apple Silicon. All right, um, as you can see here, I just have my desktop here. Um, I am recording this and disregard all of my files here, but uh, we've got Final Cut Pro, and I'm just gonna do a quick test here starting up Premiere Pro here in a little bit, but I wanna make sure that there's nothing else running in the background just to give it a fair fight. So I've got Final Cut Pro um, right here. Then we have Finder obviously, which is always running and then Notes because it's got some of my notes for this video that I'm just going back and forth with. So I'm gonna close that and then let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. All right, there we go. Starting back up. All right, and wasn't that bad. It was actually a pretty smooth um, startup. So let's go ahead and start off with a um, new library. So we'll go new. Um, <clears throat> M1 Premiere Test. There we go. And put some footage really quick. And I've got four clips here. So this is Final Cut Pro right now, as you can see. Um, so I've got um, S Cine Tone, 4K 24 frames, S Cine Tone, 4K 24, S Log 3, and max bitrate. And then we've got 4K 60 frames, S Log 3, and max bitrate. And then we've got a ProRes RAW um, file right here in 4K. So let's go ahead and set up um, the project here. I just wanna change where it's gonna be saved. <clears throat> That's good enough for me. All right. And we'll import uh, the same files into this. And so I just labeled it as my camera that I've got here and we've got the same files here. So um, let's just go ahead and set up this project. And I just wanna show you the difference between Final Cut Pro as it plays back in these three, uh, these four video clips. And then I wanna show, show it to you in Premiere Pro just to sh see the difference because I know everything's gonna be fine in Final Cut because I've edited video um, video files like these, very similar ones, and it, they cut, cut through everything very smoothly. So I didn't have any hiccups or issues in just regular playback. Now I will be doing just some soft editing here, just some color correction back to Rec. 709 on those S-Log3 um, video files, and then uh, just playing around with the ProRes RAW. But I just wanna see how, how just simple it can do it, because I'm not looking to do anything crazy with the Premiere Pro just yet, so. Go ahead and set up this timeline. Uh, all that is good to go. Cool. We'll drop that in here. I'll go ahead and mute this. <clears throat> and it looks like playback in Destiny Tone is really good. No hiccups, everything's good, cool. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Now it's been a while since I've used Premiere Pro because like I said, I, I quit using it um, actually. So it's been like almost a year now that I haven't even used it or even touched it for that matter. So let's go ahead and let's just drop this in here. Boom. Ooh, look at that. All right, so we've got just a basic timeline set up here. Um, looks like a couple things are a little bit different than what I remember them being. But you know what, let's just go ahead and play it and see what happens. 
It's looking really good so far. Yeah, looks like it's pretty smooth. Now let's go ahead and start dropping in some of this other, these other video clips. So I'm gonna just make this time a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna drop these two in. I'm gonna keep the ProRes raw out for a little bit. So we've got, yeah, looks like everything is still going smooth here with the S-Log3. Nothing is just dropped in. I haven't done anything with it just yet. Here, let's go with the 60 frames. I'll go ahead and change this to um, regular 24 frames. So I'm not sure if you knew that, but if you have a timeline that is in a 23.98 or 24 frames a second in Final Cut Pro, and you drop a 60 frame uh, per 60 frame clip in, it'll still play at the faster rate, but you can actually change it automatically by by just clicking on it, going to your little time uh, frame here, and then go into automatic speed. It'll automatically change your 60 frames a second clip to where it should be, which on this timeline, it's gonna be 23.98. And so it doesn't, I don't have to do the math to figure out that it's 40% slowed down. Um, it just automatically does it. So I really like this tool in Final Cut Pro. Now with Premiere, I have to go in there and have to do it manually. I have to type in 23.976 and it's, Kind of a mess it was something that i never really enjoyed doing uh because this is just a faster workflow but let's go ahead and play it yep it's slowed down looks good no hiccups here and this is all at the max bit rate so this clip here and this clip here is at max bit rate this was just in an 8-bit so these two are in 10-bit actually and no hiccups in Final Cut Pro. As you can see, it's still rendering with the little dots there. So let's go ahead and drop in the same two clips here in Premiere. Now it might give me some issues with the um, with the slowed down footage, but let's go and drop that one in and the 60 frames here. All right. And let's see what happens. <clears throat> Oop. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be going back and forth because I know here it does. So as you can see, we've got no hiccups here when it goes across, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that right now or not. So not saying that this is a bad thing, but it's just not doing anything right now. Let's do this. Let's grab it. Okay, so there is it. It is a little tough for Premiere Pro to be playing now I'm gonna try to figure out how to slow this down. Oh, speed duration, perfect. So it looks like everything is playing so far so good. The scrubbing was a little tough, but the playback is, is what's really going. So no hiccups here, and no hiccups in the bar. Awesome, I'm happy with that. And so let's go ahead over to this so the play button actually takes um, a couple of seconds to actually start registering in. So um, I'd say about maybe a second to, a, you know, two seconds maybe before it actually plays when I hit. Do you see that lag? So it's paused right now. And so I'm gonna hit the space bar. Okay, so that was a lot faster. So a little bit slow for moving from one clip to the next clip, but no hiccups here so far. Yeah, I'm happy with that, so that's really cool. And let's see if we can't drop in this ProRes RAW clip right in here. Well, that's kind of a nice shot. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and play this back. I'm gonna mute it uh, just for right now. So no, no hiccups here as to be expected, but let's go ahead and we dropped it in here, so let's go ahead and press the space bar and see if there's any lag. No lag, so that's good. And it is, oh, we do, we are getting some lag here. Yeah, no hiccups there. So let's go ahead and start adding, adding in, adding, adding in some corrections here. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll use the camera LUT transform here um, that's just automatically baked in or built in to Final Cut Pro um, X. So I've got the Sony S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. Turn that over to a Rec. 709 file and now we are, we're, we're good here. Um, let's see actually what's that, okay. And then you can adjust a little bit more. So let's go and do the same thing here. 
So let's go, ho go ahead over to this. Now this might take me a little while just because I haven't used Premiere Pro in a very long time. So let's see if I can't figure out how to get this back into just a Rec. 709 file. All right, and let's go ahead and play back. Oh, that was weird. There was a small glitch there. I'm not sure if you saw it. I'm going to go back just a little bit just to see if that happens. Yeah, there's another small glitch. There's another glitch there. That is really weird. So that's the second time I've seen the glitch. I'm sure you guys have seen it as well. So. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch over to the 4K 60 frames a second. It's really windy where I live, so these flags just get torn up by the wind. And we go through quite a bit of them, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. So it looks like, oh, there's another glitch there. That is so strange. So I'm not entirely sure where that is coming from and why that's happening, but that's the third time that I've seen a glitch. Um, let me see if it happens again. There's another glitch there, right there, and right here. So that's the fifth glitch that I've seen in the actual footage. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually gonna be, um, if that's gonna export out as that. It's probably not. This is probably just Premiere Pro rendering stuff and, and putting in transforms and turning stuff back to Rec. 7. Like, it's probably just part of that, um, where that's coming from. So not entirely sure where that is, but it's just a little weird in, that it's in the playback video here. And I've seen it multiple times already, as, as you may have seen it as well. But all in all, everything is still playing pretty smoothly. Let's go back to the ProRes RAW now. All right, well, I don't want to go into too much. Like I said, this is really just going to be a first impressions of, of, all, of all of it. So I had just updated it. I, the, only, the only other um, option, the only, sorry. The only other time that I actually started up Adobe Premiere was um, right after I loaded it because it had to load in all the other stuff that it does on the initial startup. So I'd done that, but this, but other than that, I saw everything just as live as you guys did. Um, I did not take a look at this footage in any of these editing softwares beforehand, so I saw everything um, just as fresh as you guys are seeing it here. So um, I, like I said, I still prefer Final Cut Pro. But uh, as you can see, I think the playback is is fine. You know, it's just as smooth. The scrubbing is a little bit um, is a little bit choppy. It's actually really choppy. Um, it, you know, so I don't I don't think I would I wouldn't want to use this footage to really cut down into um, you know like scrubbing through a lot of footage. Um, maybe just a handful of clips, honestly. But um, you know, with without scrubbing, I wouldn't be you know it would slow down the the workflow. So um, that's kind of an issue. And then um, just some of these glitches that I'm seeing in just the picture. So it's kind of weird that I I keep seeing it happening. Now I haven't tried any of this in uh, DaVinci Resolve, so I, I have used that uh, program as well, just a little bit. And so I I would like to actually test that out um, with some of the same footage. So that might be the next video with Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, because I don't have it actually on my computer at all. Um, I don't have it loaded, I haven't used it in, in probably six months or so. Um, so I quit using Premiere Pro long ago, and then um, I used DaVinci just a little bit, um, and then but I was pretty much exclusive to Final Cut Pro for a while, um, at least for all my professional um, projects and, and video clients. So, But all in all, I think it's a good improvement for Adobe Premiere. Now, obviously everything's gonna continue to get hashed out. With this, I know they had the beta back in December, so it's really been seven months that they've been um, getting down uh, into the, the code and, it, and all the stuff that needs to be changed with the program itself, just so that it, it can be compatible with Apple M1 Silicon. But I'm really glad they got it out. Um, I, I heard good things about the beta version. I also did hear that the Rosetta version of Adobe Premiere, the emulation, was okay, but I, that was not my experience at all. Um, I tried it once and it, it just didn't work. And so I'm not sure where, uh, how those guys were actually getting good quality um, you know, results and workflows and, and even export times with the emulation tool. But now it's on M1. It's all in silicon, so that is really exciting. So I really hope you, know, you guys like this video. Um, I'll probably finish this video out by exporting the what I've done here so far, just to see where it's at and see what the time uh, is gonna be. But um, 
Uh, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you want to see any other, other different tests. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.